I had a, a viewer question uh, submitted privately, and I love these. You guys are welcome to give them to me anytime. This is good stuff. Uh, this is from Satchit. He says, hello, sir. How would areas of poverty have any sort of security within them in a stateless society? Providing policing is an expensive thing, especially in high crime neighborhoods, which tend to be areas of poverty. Why would security services even go there if there's no consumer base that can afford such services? Without any sort of policing in such areas, crime would only increase, which would definitely have negative consequences. Is there any way this issue could be navigated in the absence of a state, the negative consequences being other businesses avoiding such high crime, which would greatly reduce access to a lot of important things like food, schooling, job opportunities, and many other things for the poor? Wouldn't such neighborhoods just break down in a stateless society? Good question. A common question. I've answered this uh, several times, and I'm happy to answer it again. Uh, so this is not to oversimplify, but it is how will the poor be taken care of by the competing policing security protection services uh, when if they can't afford it? Um, the first thing I'll point out is that there is a massive demand in the general public for the poor and underprivileged and sick and mentally handicapped people to be cared for. The evidence that I can provide for you of that is obviously the massive welfare state. This was willed into existence. Now, granted, it's grown on the backs of political gamesmanship and, and vote buying, um, but most people want there to be this welfare system because they want the people that can't afford medical care or can't afford housing or can't feed themselves. They want those people taken care of. There is a demand for that service that exists in just about everybody. I certainly have a, have a demand for that service. I want the poor people to be taken care of. I go out and I do it myself with the don't comply crew here um, because I don't want government doing it because they, Fuck everything up. <laughs> but, um, Billy the Kid, 21 hours without power so far in Texas? Are you okay? I mean, it's gotta be, it's gotta be the same temperature inside your house as outside, right? I hope you're okay. I hope you're safe. I didn't know it was that bad in some places in Texas. That is insane. Wow. Um, I hope you're all right. If you need anything, you know, let us know in chat. Maybe we can get some people to help you. Um, wow. Um, where was I? Sorry. Oh, yeah. So there is a demand for protection. Uh, there's a demand for, for the poor to be fed, clothed, housed, um, given medical care, uh, and certainly to be protected as well. Uh, which means that there's going to be entrepreneurs that are out there trying to make money solving that problem, which means that the brain power and massive competition of the free market will be unleashed on the problem instead of what we have now, which is mostly monopolized government welfare programs that are terrible. And we all know they're terrible and I don't even need to spend time making that argument. Um, they're inefficient, wasteful, usually don't even help the thing that they're out there to help or whatever. Um, I can guess how it might work, um, though I don't propose to be able to predict the free market, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure it'll surprise me in the innovation that could happen in that space, absent government coercion. Uh, but, you know, I think about protection services. Like I think about a company that provides protection for people I, uh, among many that compete with each other to provide the best, the best service for the lowest price uh, to, to make their customers as happy as they can. And I'm reminded of all the companies that exist now that are constantly doing everything from virtue signaling about you know, 
Gay Pride Month and Black History Month and blah, 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 and donating massive amounts of money to random foundations just to be able to put a, a profile label on their Twitter picture that says they support whatever. Uh, anyway, so there's the corporations have a budget set aside for donating to causes like this that help them look better and help them be more um, kind and generous uh, in looking to their customers. Um, so there's that, but maybe that's a weaker argument. So I think I can do better. Um, so let's say that I run a security company and one of my agents is out there in the field and he sees somebody that, um, that is in trouble. Maybe they're getting attacked or held up or robbed or whatever. And I, you know, I quickly look up on my pad that they're not our customer. They're not my company's customer. Um, they're the, maybe a customer of another company. I am almost positive that it would be in all these security companies' benefits to have um, reciprocal agreements with each other, working agreements with each other, that if one of them isn't available for their specific customer in the moment, that the other company should do the best they can to protect that person. And then, you know, They'll, they'll settle up on the costs and fees and stuff on the back end later. Um, why do I think they would have these kind of working agreements? Um, because, number one, we see that today amongst competitors and in industries. They, they work together to better serve their customers. Number two, because as a, if I were a customer looking to hire, to, con to sign up for a security company, I would want them to have those agreements with the other security companies because I, you know, there's a high chance that my particular company might not be there wherever I am when I need them. And if somebody else is, I would want them to have that kind of agreement set up. That would be a pretty ubiquitous expectation, I would think, from the customers. And if that's the case, then the companies will want to satisfy the demand for that. Um, but if we have somebody that isn't covered by any security company, so like, let's take it all the way there. Like, let's say that I'm, you know, I have my security company and one of my agents is standing there on the street and he sees somebody else uh, getting attacked and he looks him up real quick on his um, tablet and finds out that, oh, they're, they're not anybody's customer. And let's just say that it was my company's policy that my guy should just stand by and let the guy be attacked. To not, not to intervene, not to do anything, not to act on his behalf because he's, He's a poor. What do you think would happen? There's cameras in everybody's hands. Imagine a video breaking on YouTube that some bystander took of my agent with my company's patch on their shirt looking at his, his tablet and saying, oh, no, that's, uh, that's not our customer. He, he doesn't pay for security, so can't do anything. And you just see this video on YouTube of my guy just standing there and watching while this guy gets his ass kicked or whatever because he wasn't on my company's protection list because he was poor. Imagine how that video would blow up on YouTube. Imagine how all of my competing security companies would grab that video and turn it into a wall-to-wall -wall 24 by 7 ad campaign against my company to steal all of my customers to their company, which definitely has a policy that has minimum basic services for even the people that aren't able to afford it. Of course people would want to move to a service like that instead of the asshole evil corporation that stands by while people get their ass kicked. Of course. Of, so that is just my playing out the situation in my head of how it would actually work. Um, there's a demand for it. Um, there will be cooperation, working agreements between companies. And because there's a demand for this, because most people are compassionate and want their companies to be compassionate as well, there's going to be a demand for people that be, that, that can't, that are, unable to afford vital services to be taken care of. Um, that's just my idea. Who knows what they're going to come up with. Maybe it'll be like a check this box on your bill to donate $5 to help the people that 
you know, mean that are means tested and can't afford protection services, something like that. I mean, I'd check that box. Like if, if the police didn't exist, the state didn't exist. Uh, and you know, I was able to freely contract with a protection agency and they had a box on there to, that I could donate to help people that needed protection. Check that box. Of course I would. I'd have like a lot of extra money that wasn't being extorted in taxes. Um, okay. So let's see. Did I answer that fully? Let me just read over it real quick. How would areas of poverty have any sort of security within them in a stateless society? Policing is an expensive thing, especially in high crime neighborhoods. Yeah, so that goes for justice too. Everything I said would, you know, the the arbitration and sort of justice agencies, judging agencies. There would be a demand for them to provide services to people that couldn't afford it as well. And, you know, the, the charity from these companies would be done so much more intelligently than the government does the agencies now. So like now if now it's one size fits all policing, um, uh, according to laws that nobody consenses to, um, the justice system is totally perverted and in bed and, and succumb, you know, just totally, um, there's a conflict of interest in the justice system all over the place. Uh, both the people that are prosecuting you, the people that are defending you and the judge deciding who wins, uh, are all paid by the same people. <laughs> um, yeah. So in a, in a free society, all of these services would be competing for your money. And if it's important to you that people that can't afford it have these services because you're not an asshole and you're a decent human being, which most people, uh, I mean, there's certainly some assholes out there and there's certainly some, most people I think want the best for people I think in that situation. It would be easy to find market solutions for that. Um, is there any way this issue could be navigated in the absence of a state, the negative consequences being other businesses avoiding such high crime? So there's probably businesses in the area, in the low income area as well, because there's businesses that specifically cater to people um, in a certain income bracket. Uh, and so those businesses would uh, want security services that made the area that they were in safer, whether or not people were able to pay. Um, so that's another way that it could be funded is through the businesses uh, paying paying for their security services and having companies compete for their business in those areas. 